We are gonna cover the King Bolin S500 Smart Scan Tool. Let's get into it. We've already did a little run through just to make sure that this thing was uh, up to snuff and not waste any time on the video. So let's open it up, see what you guys are looking at. Don't mind my fingerprints here. So this is the tool itself. I would say the packaging is pretty robust. You're looking at a weight of maybe two pounds, two and a half pounds, something like that. So we hold down the power button on the top left. This thing should boot right up. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at what else is in the box here. We've got our manual right here. It comes in multiple languages. So that's pretty useful. It teaches you how to use different functions, update it, et cetera, et cetera, like any good manual would do. Uh, by the way, thank you to King Bolin for being today's sponsor. They sent us this reader to try out. I'm very happy about that. Um, we've worked with them in the past. Uh, we've also tried another one of their scan tools. I am going to link that video up here in the corner so you can take a look at it. This is a USB to USB-C charger. Uh, that's to charge the tool, update it if you want to, but you don't really need it if you're planning on uh, charging it, if you uh, just wanna charge it while you're using the car. Because check this out, I've already got the cable plugged into my OBD2 reader. Uh, just a quick reference for you guys. We did have an opportunity to test this on a few other um, vehicles. Uh, we got to test this on a Nissan, a Honda CRZ. So the Nissan was a 350Z. The CRZ uh, is a Honda, of course. And the uh, Infiniti G37, which we are running today. This is uh, one of our personal G37s for the channel. So we're gonna switch to the on position here. Now we're on. This will go ahead and connect. So as you can see here, we're charging, which is awesome. The tool will charge itself off of the car's battery, which is pretty cool. So if I see the voltage up here, right now we're at 11.6, 11.4. When I was testing it earlier, the um, battery level was at like more of a 12.8 or 13 volts. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. If it gets a little low, I'll start the car, just to keep it running, stuff like that. As you can see here, it's got the uh, time is accurate at the time I'm shooting this. It's a little late right now, but uh, it also connects to Wi-Fi. We did update this tool um, by just connecting it to Wi-Fi and running updates. That would be right here in this screen. This screen, just so you guys know, is a touch screen, but you can also use the buttons here on the side to control it however you need to, as you can see here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I can select diagnostics and hit okay, but I'm just gonna tap it so you guys can see the response of the touch screen. Uh, there we go. So it gives you a menu of uh, things that you can do as far as like uh, what the menu of the uh, vehicle is. Um, you're gonna see at the top here that uh, Nissan and Infiniti are near the top because we've already done uh, a pull on this car but we're gonna do a little VIN scan. After about 30 seconds, it pulled up my VIN number accurately. This is the same thing that uh, the smaller scanner did, uh, except it took a little bit longer because the processing power is obviously a lot higher on this scanner. So um, I have an Infiniti G37 sedan. This is a 2010, um, but we are going to go ahead and select our Nissan GTR, even though um, it's probably because of the generation of uh, ECU. You know, a GTR would be running uh, EQ Tech if you wanted to run like a flash or something like that. But let's go ahead and run a health report. So, as you can see here, the health report is pretty quick. We're at 40%, seven, eight, nine seconds. When we did this scan on the uh, smaller King Bolin module, we were looking at somewhere along the lines of one minute to do everything. Now, the last time I ran a scan, I had the car on. So when I had the car running, there was a code that got shown as far as the uh, ABS voltage being low. Um, in this uh, scenario, it's not showing me that, which I find to be interesting. So we're gonna check out the system scan. Now with the system scan, we're basically, it's showing us, um, what's very interesting is that certain things are not showing 
between when the car is on and when the car is off. I'm talking about the car is on right now, but the motor is not running. So I'm gonna take you back through the through the menu just so that you guys can kind of see. We're gonna we're gonna end the diagnostic session. We're gonna go back. We're gonna check the OBD, and it basically gives you a you know a basic rundown here. So now we're gonna go back home, and we're gonna turn on the car. Here's a good flash. Now we were down to 9.2 volts. We're automatically up to 13.9, 14 volts. So you can see that the battery reading is accurate, which is good. That's a good thing. Uh, now, now we're gonna run our diagnostics with the motor running. We will go to history because we know that that's our car here. We'll select our car. Now, we have uh, the same thing as before. We're back to our health report. We're gonna check it. Now, the last time we checked our health report while the car was off, we had 15 seconds to scan. Now it's five. This is the motor running. So, as you can see, everything checks out. I ran back my VIN scan basically just to like double check while the car was on. I wanted to like start, do a start from scratch as far as this was concerned. Um, so let's give you a quick look as, as far as like what the rest of the unit looks like. We've got some nice like grip ready material on the back. The packaging is pretty robust, like you can kind of hear. What's cool is it is it does actually give me, so just so you guys know, it does say GTR, but when it breaks down, it actually gives you the correct uh, chassis code and, and um, where the car was produced, what year it was manufactured in, what model it actually is, G37 sedan, which is good. So we're gonna confirm that. Yes, confirm. Health report. Back to a health report. Now, what I'm trying to figure out here is basically if I'm gonna see the same ABS code, there it is, that's what I was looking for. Now, this is what I wanted to show you guys because this is a code that I have seen in the past on this car. So this is a C1109, battery voltage abnormal. Doesn't seem to actually throw a code on the car, but it is something that just pops up. Um, I'm not super worried about it, but we're gonna go into it. And we're basically just gonna see if we can clear the code because that's one of the main reasons why we buy readers, right? Is so that we can diagnose the car and clear the code, especially like, let's say you're in California, hypothetically, and you wanted to clear your code so you weren't running a check engine light when you needed to get your car smogged. That's a thing. Clear fault code, great. Do you wanna clear the fault code? Yes. Your fault took code completed. Now we go back. Communicating. Now, obviously, any main check engine light you're going to be able to clear, but it's good. We can see that we can clear this code. Now it goes to it. It should be said that I did have other fault codes in the history of this car specifically, but we have cleared it because this is actually the third scanner that we reviewed on the channel. Uh, with the other one being another King Bowling unit that did allow us to clear uh, that ABS code again in the past. So there were other codes that I did have on this car that I could test to clear, but the reality is that I know that this scanner is gonna be able to clear um, a lot of things. It's gonna be able to clear any main code, but one of the things that should be said about uh, this scanner versus the other scanners in the, I'm gonna call them the full size lineup. So one of the things that should be said about scanners in the full size lineup is that, um, the better of a model you get between the King Bolin S500, the S600, and the S800, the more codes you can clear. Um, it seems like a lot of the functionality is gonna be about the same. I would rate the King Bolin S500 as your home mechanics uh, full-size code reader. I'm talking like, let's say you want to have a code reader that can get on Wi-Fi if you want to, that can snapshot your codes, uh, that can do things like that, touchscreen functionality, presentation is good, packaging is robust, but your hands are dirty from working on your car and you don't necessarily want to be touching your phone. This is the unit that I would get. 
Um, if you are, let's say in comparison, the small module that I had that we talked about in the other video, that's more for the guy who uh, maybe just wants to see what's going on with their car and uh, just wants to keep a module in their glove box and it's nice robust packaging. It's about this size, you just pop it on, you can run it on your phone, you're good. Now, if you wanted to bump up to maybe the S600 or S800, the price differences look like $170, and we're talking Amazon prices here, $170 for the S500 that's shown in this video, uh, with a $50 coupon currently, which would make it about $120 before tax and shipping. Then you have your S600 that lands at $209 with a $50 coupon, brings you down to about $160 before tax and shipping. I do believe the shipping is free, by the way, so it's really just tax. And then the S800, which clears everything. We're talking like that is, that's the scanner you get when you have a shop and you want a, a pretty good scanner, but you're not going out and spending $2,000 on one. That unit is 200 and uh, I believe it was $259 with a $50 coupon, bringing it down to 209 before tax and possibly shipping. So the difference in price between this S500 unit which is shown right here, and the S800, which clears a bunch of codes that you may never actually have to clear, is uh, $90. Uh, when the unit itself is $120, do you really wanna spend another 50% to be able to clear that many more codes? I mean, that question is really up to you specifically if you guys are looking uh, for a scanner, what your functionality is, what your use case is, all of that stuff. That's that's. Uh, boils down to you, you gotta ask yourself. But when it comes down to it, like I said before, if you want a scanner that is full size, nice screen, touch screen, uh, responsive, operates much faster than the small module that we had reviewed previously, um, gives you real time information, can snapshot your codes, connects to the internet, uh, you name it, this for for what basically is $120 before tax, this is a pretty good unit. I think I think 120 bucks for a reader like this, you're pretty golden. I spoke to uh, Indy about this. We did uh, do kind of some tests on a few different vehicles, including a Lexus RCF, Honda CRZ, Nissan 350Z, and now the Infiniti G37, like I spoke about. Um, out of all the scanners that we had, he said hands down he would take this one just because the presentation, the speed, uh, the size, the robustness, all of that stuff. Um, and I mean, for me, it's a no brainer as well. Uh, would I get the S800 over this? Uh, I don't know, but the reality is that if we ever actually had to clear one of those codes that the S800 clears that the S500 doesn't, probably would say yes to that. But anyways, that's gonna do it for our review on the King Bowl and S500. Um, might have been a little long-winded, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the content. Thank you again for King Bolin for uh, sponsoring the video. We really appreciate you guys. If you guys have any questions about the scanner at all in the comments, uh, please let us know. And if you like the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. We'll see you in the next one, and we appreciate you guys.